So when polling was first created, the thesis was we need to hear from a wide variety of Americans. And the way to do that for most of modern history was why don't we call them because everybody has a landline telephone and literally what this used to be was randomly typing numbers into a telephone that would make the chances of any american being picked approximately the same response rates were around 40 percent in the 1990s now they're hovering around four percent Imagine you're a soccer mom in a swing state such as Ohio. You're busy driving your kids to soccer practice. A traditional pollster, what they would do is they would call your house at 6 p.m. You just picked up your kids from soccer practice. They're tired. They need to be fed and helped with their homework. Are you going to pick up the phone and talk to the pollster? Statistics say there is a 96% chance that you are not going to do so. If you look at the poll to make the Democratic debate stage, it had about 298 people in it. At the same time, a typical BuzzFeed quiz, such as what type of potato are you, has over 150,000 respondents. Previously, the big trend was everybody has a landline telephone. Now I think the trends are the vast majority, I believe over 90% of Americans have cell phones. I think around 80% of Americans have smartphones. And the percentage of Americans on social media is also continuing to substantially increase. How do we make it so any American has the same chance of being picked by a pollster? Increasingly, the odds are that going through social media or cell phones might be the way to do it. The crux of what a pollster has to do is figure out how to weight the data. So there are two populations we care about, either the underlying population or the population of voters. And so what a pollster has to do is they have to look at their data coming in and make that data match the underlying sample that they want to best represent, which is usually the, the voting population. And so if certain groups are overrepresented in the people who they were able to contact, they would make each of their opinions worth a little less. And if certain groups were underrepresented, make each of their opinions in their poll worth a little more. The real problem with this method is that nobody knows who's going to show up to vote. So any form of waiting tends to be based on the last election cycle, which is usually quite different than, than the next election. So what pollsters did not account for in 2016 was the massive turnout of people who tended to have just a high school education or less. And so one of the major failings of polling was they did not weight education accordingly. Do not pay attention to national polls. National polls do not really matter. Where people have to look at is, is state polls. Where the miss in 2016 is, is important to analyze because the reality is national polls were correct. National polls said Hillary Clinton's gonna win the election by about two percentage points. Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote by two percentage points. Where the polls were really inaccurate and incredibly off was at the state level, particularly in the Midwest. One of the key swing states in the last election and this upcoming election is Florida. And Florida has a population of around 21 million Americans and a high quality poll, if it's done by telephone, it will have about a thousand residents of Florida in the poll. So first, it's important just to realize how few people that is in the context of the wider Florida population. A key component to the poll that people often miss when they read news articles is what's called the margin of error. And what the margin of error means is how confident is the pollster that the 1,000 people she spoke with represent the wider 21 million people in Florida. And a really high quality poll will have a margin of error, of, let's say it's around three percentage points. So what that means is if a poll comes out in Florida that says Biden has 52% of support and Donald Trump has 49% support in Florida. Even though 52% is the average number, what the poll is saying is Biden's support is somewhere between 49% and 55%. Now here's where margin of error gets important. If you look at that bottom of the range, 49%, that's the same that Donald Trump had in this make-believe Florida poll. So as an astute reader, what we have to be careful of is when we read about in the news that 
Biden has a, a small lead over Donald Trump in Florida, once you look at the margin of error, that lead often disappears. I'm really optimistic about the future of polling and the future for Americans to be able to engage with the media and, and with politicians more broadly. When I, when I take a step back, it's really easier than ever to get in contact with Americans. Think of all the tools at a pollster's disposal now. Before it was just mail or telephone, now we have those methods. We can add in text, email, social media engagement. And so I'm optimistic that political scientists can crack the code and figure out how do we combine all these methods to accurately hear from Americans.